All right, welcome back in everyone to the Go Two Four Seven podcast. I'm Glenn West, the senior writer here at the site. Uh, joined once again by Dylan Sanders, our contributing writer. Uh, LSU's home season is coming to an end this weekend. It kind of feels weird to say that. It just feels like the season just started, but uh, you know, first year under Brian Kelly and his home season home stretch here in the first year is coming to an end on Saturday as the Tigers get ready to take on visiting UAB. Uh, we'll get to some analysis of this game. We'll, we'll preview a little bit of the matchup, a little bit about senior day. Uh, we'll wrap up with some basketball talk. But uh, first off, I guess, Dylan, how, how are you doing this week? Uh, doing good. The semester ends pretty soon. We have Thanksgiving break and then one more week of classes after that. So we're, it's, we're coming up on it. It's a short, short semester, but uh, I'm not going to complain. Yeah, I always remember the the fall break at LSU. It was weird uh, how it was kind of split up at the end. You had the Thanksgiving, and then it was pretty much finals, and then it was over. I mean, that's kind of how it worked worked out every year. Um, so other that, than that, you know, yeah. Other than that, I'm just ready for World Cup, World World Cup football. The other the other kind of football. The other football will be in action. I think when starting tomorrow or uh, starting, starting Sunday. Sunday. Starting yeah. Sunday. Okay. Yeah, Sunday. Okay. All right. Well, we'll get into some LSU talk here. Um, you know, obviously the Tigers now uh, sitting sitting pretty. They've clinched the SEC West. They've done a lot of things that I don't think many people expected them to here in year one under Kelly. Um, but they still got a job to do here over the next two weeks, starting with uh, UAB, their final non-conference game, their final home game of the stre- of their 2022 season. Um, just a couple initial thoughts on this one. Um, you know, I think probably the biggest key for me coming in is just can the passing offense get back on track for these final stretch conference games that you're going to be playing in the next couple of weeks. Um, really would like to see Jaden Daniels and the offense have an efficient day, uh, come out and start fast um, you know, with the passing game. Uh, I, I think it's going to be extremely important to, to, to really move the ball uh, around to these various receivers, Kayshawn Booty, Jare Jenkins. Uh, still not sure as we're talking right now what Brian Thomas's status is. He's in concussion protocol uh, dating back to last week. So we'll get a little bit more confirmation from Coach Kelly on Thursday uh, in his press conference. But it did sound like he was going to be able to at least practice this week in, in some capacity, which sounded good on his end. Um, but you, you want to see the ball really I, I think, you know, just, just a lot better in terms of the passing offense and getting those guys involved. You want to see the receivers create some consistent uh, separation, I think, from these UAB uh, defensive backs. Just, uh, you know, a, a really important game just in terms of getting right. Um, you know, you still got Texas A&M and then obviously Georgia in the SEC championship game. But, uh, you know, A&M's a team that's not really playing for a whole lot right now. And so going into that game, knowing that they're probably just going to be playing pretty loose, you know, playing for, you know, I guess some pride there in the last game of their season. Uh, you want to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row and that you're pretty healthy heading into that game. So I would say that's probably the the, the number one thing I want to see from this LSU team this weekend against a UAB team that's, you know, quite honestly a little bit better than their record. They're 5-5, five and five, but this could easily be a 7- or 8-win team. They've, they've kept a lot of games close. They were right at there until the end with Liberty, who's really gone on a – a team has really gone on a, a really magical run for 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 Liberty. You know, this whole season they've been extremely consistent. So, um, Dylan, just looking at this, I guess from your your view, what what are one or two things that you think are going to be the biggest keys in this game for LSU? Um, yeah, I going into this game, I was going into the season uh, before the season. Whenever I saw that we were playing UAB uh, this week. And uh, I, I was kind of worried because Bill Clark uh, has a coach I have a lot of respect for, is a really good coach, had to uh, medically step away from the team. And I just don't know. I don't think that they've been – they have the talent. I just don't know if they've really lived up to what they, they could be or as dangerous as they could be. I don't think this is a game that's nearly as uh, scary without uh, Bill, uh, Bill Clark – at the helm, um, which is a good thing for LSU. Hopefully, you know, he's all healthy, gets right, 
and uh, could be in line for a bigger coaching job once he is ready to come back. But uh, that's sort of the, yeah, you, you kind of hit the, the nail on the head. It's just kind of like a get right game for this, uh, for this defense, for this offense um, and a momentum carrier for the defense. The, uh, the UAB passing defense hasn't been too stellar. The uh, passing offense is pretty lackluster, but their running game is killer which is kind of, I feel like, is a situation that LSU has run into a lot, except UAB doesn't really have the running threat at quarterback um, that other schools have had. Dwayne McBride is one of the best running backs in the country, but we've seen LSU be able to neutralize really, really good run. We saw it last week against Rocket Sanders. So it's a game where I think it's a team LSU has played other better teams like it and kind of know what to do. Um, so yeah, it's just a, it's just a confidence builder and a conf- confidence carrier over into the uh, last game of the season. And now we can say for sure conference championship week. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to be able to say that, I guess, but yeah, I mean, just with, you know, with UAB, I think the, you know, the biggest thing here is just to not let them hang around very long. Yeah. I think that's been kind of a consistent issue for LSU really all season is they've gotten off to these slow starts and you just don't really know which, which team you're going to get at the beginning of these games. And they, they really have seemed to figure stuff out, you know, for the most part in the second half, they've been a great second half team most of the year. Um, but there, there are some challenges with this UAB team. You mentioned McBride. He's got 1400 yards on the run on, on the ground this year, 17 touchdowns. The, the biggest area that LSU is going to have to, you know, really key in on is him in terms of the game plan and what you know, uh, UAB can can really throw at you. So uh, I do think that's going to be the biggest key for LSU's defense, but we've seen it this year. Uh, Ali Gay, Makai Wingo, um, Micah Baskerville, all those guys have been pretty good. Um, you know, Jaqueline Roy most recently, all those guys have been really good at, at stopping the run, slowing down the run. You saw it last week against Arkansas. Um, I, I will be interested to see just kind of what kind of tweaks, what kind of quirks that maybe the defense throws in there with maybe not as mobile of a quarterback. Cause I mean, that's something you're going to face uh, in the last two weeks of the season as well with what A&M offers and, and obviously what Stetson Bennett does at Georgia, those aren't really mobile quarterbacks. So maybe this is an opportunity for LSU to start implementing some in-season changes, uh, some late season changes um, to what they're doing schematically on defense. I think um, yeah, Harold Perkins has just been so terrific for you as that spire for opposing quarterbacks. Maybe they can uh, – can can find consistent ways to get him back you know in the in the backfield and 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 maybe just kind of get get him going a little bit more in in a variety of different ways i think there's a lot of room for optimism on his future of what he can do um but we've only seen him rush the passer and i'm going to be curious to see uh if, if maybe they dial up some stuff where he's back in coverage a little bit more maybe makes a play on a ball as a linebacker see if he's got the hands for it that kind of deal um, uh, so I'll be very interested to see if there's any slight changes schematically if what they're doing defensively, because you're going to be facing, I think, a lot of the similar quarterbacks in terms of how they play uh, heading down the stretch here this season. Just w- w- what are your thoughts on that, you know, in terms of defense and what, you know, the kind of the, the game plan should be with handling UAB? Yeah, find, uh, find what works, find, um, find the matchups that, that you like and, uh, honestly gets a lot of the uh the guys that I, I feel like this is a game where you could start to find what you have in like a Harold Perkins Savian Jones uh defensive line group against you know against the run put them to the test um against a, a good run team try and figure out what you have to work with um it is a senior night give some give some maybe some seniors some playing time that uh that haven't had a ton but also balance it with looking to the future this is a, a late game a late season t- test Opp- tune-up opportunity. game yeah. opportunity um 
to get some get some guys some some game reps. And of course, you have two you have two games left, two really big games, potentially more after that, depending on how these games work out. You need to find out what you have um, in case something happens. You know. Yeah, yeah. I think a, another guy to throw in there is, is someone who's seen his role increase. At Demario Tolan, maybe you get him a few extra snaps in there. I feel like we'll see um, him a lot, a yeah. lot this week. Yeah, Tolan. Wit weeks. Will we? Wit, wit, will, yeah. will, will weeks. weeks. Yeah. The, his then, his uh, brother. Uh, I was looking up his stats today. It's going to be annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be strange because <laughs> there there's wit weeks that's coming in for uh, the 2023 recruiting class, and you got. Older brother Will, who's a linebacker right now, who's a redshirt freshman, transferred in. Um, so that's that's going to be a, a problem for next year. But um, uh, yeah, I think just building on that a little bit, I think the biggest thing outside of just seeing the offense and just seeing the passing game continue to improve, what I'd like to see more than anything is to get a variety of players out on the field and most importantly, just get out of here healthy. Um, LSU has been extremely I wouldn't say lucky, but they've been very, uh, very comfortable with in terms of their, their their injuries in the last couple of weeks. They've really gotten healthy. Um, you've seen it in the secondary. You've seen it in the offensive line play. Um, they're they're. I think that speaks to the job that Jake Flint's done as strength and conditioning coach and really how all these players have taken such great care of their bodies that they're in a position where there are really no big significant injuries outside of what Mason Smith did on the very first play of or the very first drive of the very first game. I mean, there's really been no other long-term injuries. You got Seven Banks, a cornerback, who you know, I think they are hoping to get back at some point this season, but no guarantee there. Um, but they're, this is as healthy as a team that LSU's had since since 19, and I think that's a really, really important part of this. It's kind of gone a little bit under the radar, so making sure you get out of this one healthy, making sure maybe you can get a, a couple curtain calls for, for the offensive and defensive players who have really led you here in the last month, five, six weeks of the season. Uh, maybe you, you get up, you know, big in the second half, and you can get Jaden Daniels off the field and get Nussmeyer in there or Walker Howard or somebody, and uh, kind of go with sailing into the sunset of the road, road of the home trip here uh, in Death Valley. Give those fans something to cheer about. So, I think this is just going to be one of those games where, uh, honestly, the most important thing is just to get out of there healthy and, and make some some slight adjustments on defense, and then maybe. Uh, you get the passing offense a little bit more consistent. But um, I'd like to also see, just kind of get your thoughts, pick your brain a little bit about uh, this senior class. I mean, I, I've talked a little bit about it, I've written a little bit about it this week. But um, the senior class, I think this one's going to be pretty unique for, for Brian Kelly just because there's such a variety of seniors. You know, you've got transfers in here. You've got uh, guys who have been with the program for five years, like Micah Baskerville and – uh, I mean, Ali Gay is a guy who's been around for three years. It feels like he's been around longer than that um, just because of the, the vocal leadership he's provided this team the last couple of years. Um, just just who are a couple of uh, – uh, Dre Jenkins is a guy I can't forget as well. Just who are a, guy, a couple of guys that uh, in terms of seniors that you think have really made uh, a significant impact on this team, whether it's on the field, off the field, um, and, and just, just guys that you're – you got to be looking forward to seeing out there on Saturday one last time in Tiger Stadium. I mean, I, I think the easy answer is Jeray Jenkins. Um, he he is, whenever you think of uh, – he's filled the roles of a lot, of, like John Trey Kirkland, all those kind of kind of guys that have been around and been on this team for a while. Just uh, a true leader in that wide receiver room. Uh, you, you, you always need guys like that. Russell Shepard comes to mind, Russell Cage, like some people like that. Like just whenever you think of like LSU Tigers, that's kind of the kind of guy that I think of personally. So being able to see him one more time is, is great. Um, Ali Gay, you mentioned Baskerville, um, Cam Wires, another senior who who could come back. Um, there are a couple. It, it's kind of weird now because you have seniors and they have like three more years of, of eligibility. You got the COVID year and the injury yeah. year and the I mean the redshirt year. I mean there's I mean there's been a lot of six 
five, six year guys on the roster the last several <laughs> years. And I don't think that's going away really for the next couple of years. So the, there's absolutely some guys that I think could return, but we'll get to that in a minute. Just get, go ahead. What's what, what um, uh, Jay Ward is a guy who I yeah. think is a senior and will go to the draft after this year, who has been uh, kind of the heart and soul of the secondary at times. Uh, yeah. Jarek Bernard Converse and Greg Brooks are two transfers who could probably, and Joe Fouché, like they could all leave yeah. um, realistically after this year, head to the NFL, but uh, have all been pretty good. Uh, pretty good. All three, I think, have been major contributions and the kind of guy, maybe an outlook on the kind of transfer that Brian Kelly will keep looking for. Yeah, I, I do think that the, the secondary will probably be the one that gets hardest after the season, uh, gets hit hardest after the season in terms of guys leaving. Um, Bernard Converse is a guy who can't come back, so he'll be gone. Um, Jay Ward and Ali Gay, I know Ali Gay is a, a defensive end, but those two guys were invited to the Senior Bowl. Uh, we got that update today, uh, just rolled out about an hour ago. Uh, so those two guys, I mean, that's usually a good indication of what those guys are thinking. Um I, I I I think this is going to be a, a, a you know an off season that really dictated by maybe two or three transfers. I'm not you're not looking to get you know the 15 that you had in here last year just because you're really want to build this thing from the freshman class up. But um, just just getting back to the seniors for a little bit, I'm I'm going to be looking at guys. Uh, who are maybe on the fence there. Um, John Emery is a name that pops to mind. He's technically a senior. He's actually not participating in senior day events um, uh, on, on Saturday. So you could take that for what it is. I'm not sure what the, exactly that means. It could mean he's thinking about coming back. It could mean he just doesn't want to deal with that this year. Um, but there, there, are, there are 17 guys that are going to be honored here on, on Saturday, and that's – that's a pretty good number. I think 13 of them have graduated already. Coach Kelly has talked about a lot this season, the the phrase, we want to graduate champions. And, um, you know, they're, they've gotten the graduation part down. Uh, they're SEC West champions. Uh, but obviously there's still a lot to play for here uh, for all those guys. So uh, just getting one last night with them and in Tiger Stadium, it, we, we talked with Ali Gay on Tuesday and, this is the first time Ali's family is going to actually get to see him play in Tiger Stadium, which I thought when he told us was just crazy. I just couldn't believe it because you think about it, 2020 was the COVID year, so really nobody was traveling, and his family lives up in the D.C. area. Uh, 2021, he had that injury three games into his season there. Uh, didn't make much sense, and family coming down if he wasn't going to be able to play. So. Uh, this has been the, the the first full year he's been healthy. The first full year where you know, things aren't really that all that crazy in terms of travel and getting down here and getting a chance to see him play. And so you could tell that that meant a lot to him uh, that he's going to have his family, his his parents, his his sister. Uh, I think he has a brother too. I can't remember, but uh, they're all going to be in town to to watch him. And uh, it's going to be similar stories for everybody. You know, Micah Baskerville. Uh, told us a great story uh, too on Tuesday when, you know, look, he was a guy that was academically ineligible uh, about a year ago. In, in 2021, he, he was really working himself back into being eligible academically. Uh, and it was around that time where he promised his his mom that he was going to get that degree and that he was not going to leave until he got that degree. And so um, to see him now, he's going to be graduating on the 16th and interdisciplinary studies and uh, – move on to potentially a career in the NFL. I think there's a lot of momentum building on him as a potential late draft flyer. I think he'd be a great locker room guy for a lot of different teams uh, at the next level. So, you know, we'll see with him, but, you know, just getting to see guys like that who have put in the work, who have really worked hard, uh, overcome some adversity. Uh, that's going to be really, really fun for me to watch uh, all these guys get an opportunity to play one last time. And, you just got to be able to compartmentalize the emotions you're going to be feeling with with the the play that you got to go out there and, and make uh, against UAB on Saturday. Yeah, who else is a senior uh, that has felt like he's been on the team for 48 years? Evan Franciani is a is a name senior receiver. Yeah, uh, shout out. It feels like he's been on the team for 20 years. I'm just gonna. That's true. Uh, he's been on there for a while. There's there's a couple of guys that I felt like that. I mean. 
uh, Von Rosenberg in past years was a guy that you never thought was ever going to lead the team. Um, and it's just, it's, just, it's just Todd Harris is another one. Todd Harris is a graduate student this year. Uh, he's been on the team for, gosh, five, six years now. I mean, it seems yeah. like he's been here since – uh, the, the beginning there, of time. There, um, there is there is also randomly a UAB guy who was a Les Miles recruit. Uh, there's a guy <laughs> Tyler Taylor. Yeah. Uh, so you know it's a special night for him. Uh, one of his last games will be back where he started. Twenty yeah. he was a 2017 contributor, which is just insane. Yeah, and if you go back and you kind of research your 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 past on his past um things didn't end all that great here um he's obviously picked himself up going through the juco route and now latching on with uab so that's good to see but uh yeah i mean look there there's just so many of those stories i mean i'm sure it's going to be pretty emotional for a guy like jay bramblett too the punter who transferred in from notre dame who's been with coach kelly since the start of his career as well so uh there's going to be a lot of emotions on on that end i think for guys who maybe even aren't seniors that, that are expected to leave guys like BJ Ojolari and Kayshawn Booty. And uh, it, it kind of the list goes down there, but I mean, like th- these are, you know, important pillars to what LSU's done this season. And uh, it's, it's just going to be a, it's going to be a good night. You know, it's always a good night for seniors uh, to have that, you know, last kind of hurrah and, and, and even for players who are, you know, potentially leaving as juniors and, and underclassmen. So, should be a good night all around. Um, I did want to kind of close here with some talk on basketball. Uh, LSU basketball is now two games into its season. Uh, we've talked about it a little bit. Um, it, it, the women's team, I believe, is 3-0 and or are they 4-0? and They're 3-0, and right? 4-0. 4-0. So they picked up a big win um, last or yesterday or I guess by the time this is coming out, yeah, when, Wednesday at uh, an eleven a.m. Uh, tip for uh, f- the field field trip week, which was a uh, 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 you know shout yeah. out to all the schools. It was there was like ten thousand kids or something like that in attendance. It was it was an experience. That, the PMAC yeah, was uh, was loud. Always- those games are always the loudest. That's what someone told me. And so I'll, I'll let you take it off with the women's just real quick. And then I'll pipe in with some men's conversation and we'll get out of here. But just what are your overall takeaways from the women four games? In? Well, we can, uh, we can start off on a good note. I didn't know if you wanted to end. You know, this team is, is something, man. It is, uh, it's one of the more fun teams uh, I've ever watched at LSU uh, basketball, men or women's. They, Angel Reese is going to be one of the most dominant post players in uh, 30 years <laughs> for LSU is what it feels like. Uh, Jasmine yeah. Carson can Jill shoot it. Fowles girl could play too. She was pretty, yeah, pretty, pretty <laughs> probably great. probably since around then. Yeah. Uh, Angel Reese is uh, is looking pretty dominant. Flavio yeah. Johnson's living up to the hype as a freshman. Uh, Jasmine Carson can shoot it, unlike anybody that the women's team has had in a while. Um, uh, Mulkey made a great, a great point saying that people like to call her a post coach, but she has one of her players holds the record for most three pointers in the game and uh, watching Jasmine Carson. Uh, if that's how Mulkey likes to, to play with the, with her three point shooters, that could very well be, uh, be challenged by her. She can shoot. She almost at uh, the, the preseason, the, the get go mad event or whatever, she uh, she lost by one point to Adam Miller in a three point shooting contest. Um, very very close, a very very close matchup. But uh, she's a really really good shooter. Overall, the team looks great. They haven't dipped below a hundred points uh, since the first exhibition where they scored eighty eight. Still, but uh, and and they're holding their opponents to something like twenty five percent shooting from the field. Obviously, they they haven't played the the craziest uh, of opponents yet. Um, but they are playing with high intensity on defense and playing really, really well on offense. And Alexis Morris looks really natural in the point guard role now that, uh, you know, she's taking over for Kayla Pointer. And, and the team is just filled out. And I think it's 100% a better team than last year's. Um, and we saw what they did. So yeah. could, they could be uh, – could be one of the highest finishes in a long time for LSU women's basketball. And they signed the number one recruiting class. So it's only going to get better from here. 
Yeah, maybe they could pass on some of the the offense into the men's team. Uh, I was gonna say this right is why now, I, I didn't know if you wanted to end with the women's. I guess we'll, end, we'll end we'll end on a little bit of a sour note. I wouldn't say sour. It's just look, watching the first couple games, we got another one. We're recording this on Thursday afternoon, so there's uh, another one here. LSU will be playing uh, UNO on Thursday night, so we'll have another you know kind of sample size of what this group looks like. But it's been it's been difficult. I would say probably the best word to say is just been difficult just because you've got so many new players on this roster um starting off with the positive adam miller's look fantastic uh he dropped 18 points in the opener followed that up with 26 in the second game um he is the offense right now uh for lsu he's creating uh for himself uh i would love to see lsu put the ball in his hands even more to create for others uh he's actually a really underrated passer and so until you can get some more consistency uh, with with your group and with those guys as a team, uh, having a guy like Miller control and dominate the ball, uh, I think is probably the best road to consistent success offensively. Uh, they have not been very good shooting the ball inside the perimeter. So two-point baskets, they're actually shooting under 40% this year, which is uh, really not good in the first couple games here against – teams like Arkansas State and, and Kansas City that you'd like to be able to dominate inside a little bit more. Uh, they just haven't been able to do it. Uh, some of that kind of goes hand in hand with uh, their big guy, K.J. Williams, has gotten in some foul trouble uh, these first couple of games, and it's had to sit out long stretches. So um, getting him going a little bit and kind of getting his fouling under control, I think will go a long way in terms of the inside presence else you can have. But um, I think we've talked about this before, uh, maybe last week when we did our kind of reaction pod to the Arkansas game. Um, but the, the size is going to is going to be a problem, I think, for LSU this year. Um, they're just not a very big team. Uh, they've had some struggles on the defensive class. Uh, they're going to have to really, uh, I think, scheme their approach as to having you know as many as four guys attacking the glass at one time. Uh, you, you're you're, you're going to have to really approach this as a as a team rebounding kind of effort uh, just because they don't have a ton of size right now on, on the floor. They're pretty religiously playing Justice Hill, Adam Miller, and Wani Wilkinson, Jalen Reed, uh, KJ Williams. Uh, they got Kendall Coleman coming off the bench and he's only playing about eight or nine minutes a game right now. I thought he was going to be a guy that could be a big rebounder uh, slash inside presence for him, but hadn't really worked out that way yet through two games. And that's the other thing I want to say is just, it is two games. You know, we've had some guys on the board, and, and you know, I'm not casting any aspersions here, but like they they've been frustrated, and and I would agree. I mean, it just hasn't looked pretty. I think that's one of the big things. I was actually talking to one of my friends earlier today, and uh, they was asking me if I should go to the LSU game tonight. And I said, sure. I mean, it's it's early. It's early. They're not going to look like uh, you know the team that the teams that LSU had the last couple of years that were just so much fun flying up and down the court with chemistry and uh, you know there's just uh, there's just not a whole lot of foundation established yet and I think that's really what this non conference schedule is going to be about for those guys uh, is kind of establishing the rotation and chemistry and uh, figuring out which guys play well together uh, and they're still very much in the thick of that and so I do think it'll come. Um, but it's just going to take some time. So um, with that, uh, did you have any other last minute thoughts on basketball, on f- football, on golf, baseball, uh, anything that, <laughs> Oh, we got uh, baseball this weekend. The purple. Bowl oh, series. we do. We do. Friday. You reminded yourself. So get to the box this weekend. I'll be there on Friday and probably on Sunday uh, as well. Uh, um, checking in some cold weather baseball. So that'll be fun. Yeah, Glenn, I wanted to remind you to bundle up for uh, Saturday night's game against mm-hmm. UAB because it's going to be a late and cold night in the press yeah. box. 8 p.m. kickoff for UAB uh, was was not what I had expected, but, <laughs> you know, you, you'll take it, I guess. It'll be another another cold one. I think there's only supposed to be like a high of 50 on Saturday, and it's going to be in the mid to low 40s for most of the night. So, and yeah, that press I'm, box gets cold. Yeah, and that yeah, I'm I'm gonna be driving. I, I've been walking to most of the games this year, <laughs> um, but I'll be driving this time. I think that's probably just a little bit too cold of a walk to make, uh, especially if the I'm not gonna be out of there by one or two in the morning. But anyway, I digress. Uh, 
we'll uh we'll, we'll reconvene here on sunday give you guys a recap of uab uh look ahead a little bit to lsu's final game of the year against texas a&m and we'll be back soon so with that we'll catch you guys later